Prices are going up across the board, and I do not believe that this is a temporary dip, and I do not believe that this is a dead cat bounce, as some, as some people have said in my comments in the past. I do not believe that. I believe that interest in sports cards, it cannot be stopped. People are so excited about sports cards that the interest and the enthusiasm and the momentum is there right now, and everything is coming back in a big way. Okay, on this episode of Sports Card Radio, we are going to take a look at a ton of sports card values. The broader sports card market continues to decline. Now, what you've been hearing from a lot of amateur sports card influencers is that all investments are down, which is fundamentally not true. Bitcoin is up 23% over the last three months and 5% for the month. The S&P 500 is up over the last month and three months. Same with the Dow Jones. Do these sports card guys invest in anything other than sports cards? Because things actually have gone up in the investment world in the last few months. But every single sports card index is down since the start of the year. Baseball's down 4.5%, golf down 6%, hockey down 7.5%, football down 16%, soccer down 22%, and basketball down an astonishing 26%. So on today's program, we will take a look at some cards that have actually done well and some not so well in the last few weeks. Dips. About 15 cards we are going to take a look at. So let's jump right into it. When it comes to Ben Simmons, I am buying. Okay, we will start with basketball. The NBA market has tanked because you guys poured in so much money to Luka and Zion, and now you're feeling the pain on it. You baked in six championships for Luka and Zion for each of those guys without realizing how hard it is to win one championship in the NBA. One guy who has won a lot of championships is LeBron freaking James. He's in the hunt for another one, but his cards continue to slide in price to your low on this very low population card. This card has dropped 67% in value in the last two years, so we've seen Luka, Zion, and LeBron prices just continue to tank in value the last couple years. The market got way, way overheated for these guys' stuff, and I think we've got another couple years of declining prices or flat prices and really nobody else probably in this industry is going to tell you that except for me because I don't care if prices go up or down just here to give you my honest opinion on things where we can be the gatekeepers here's another honest opinion hey I don't know if this is a good price or bad price on this Steph Curry autograph card but what I do know is eight of these cards have been discovered to be trim. And so you have to be very, very careful with this 2009 Crown Royale stuff. They did it to James Harden cards. Um, so we spent about $50,000 on two James Harden cards. That's right. They did it to a ton of Steph Curry cards. A lot of these cards have been doctored. And yes, they will end up in a BGS holder, a PSA holder, an SGC holder, and anybody's holder. It's just hard for the grading companies to catch this type of stuff. So literally eight of these 390. 99 cards of Steph Curry have been discovered to be trimmed already. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if this particular one had been worked on or doctored as well. So just be very, very careful when you're buying even some of this modern stuff, especially Curry. These will include a paper trimmer. I prefer mine slightly used. Let's take a look at the bright side of things in the basketball card market. I think there were some cards that did pretty well. I mean, hey, $61,000 for Precious Metal Gems Charles Barkley card. I think that's pretty darn good price there. 50000 for a Gary Payton card, so that's not bad at all. That one's serial numbered one of 100 there. How about 19000 for Clyde the Glide Drexler there? Again, a strong, very, very strong price for a guy there in Clyde Drexler. Hey, we've talked about this card a lot, 1986-87 Fleer, Michael Jordan, rookie PSA 10. This one has caught a little bit of a bid from somebody. Hey, it wouldn't take more than one or two people to kind of push the price of this card up ten or $20,000. You remember that this card was actually hovering around $120,000 for probably several months. So maybe it flatlined a little bit and maybe it has caught a bid up to, you see the last one here has sold for $869,000. So we'll continue to track the price of the Michael Jordan PSA 10 here on the program. Shit. I don't know why that's on the box. I thought they were supposed to hide that. They were supposed to hide that shit. shit. No, don't, 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 don't be kissing. Don't be kissing. No, no. Why'd they do that? 
Something that I just found pretty interesting and maybe something that's just underpriced are these game used jerseys. Here's a rookie De'Aaron Fox jersey. Hey, my nieces and nephews love this guy. They they would recognize and know this guy, De'Aaron Fox, more than they would recognize Shaq and Kobe and Jason Williams and Mike Bibby and Chris Webber and Vladi Divac and Scott Pollard. So $2,500 for a De'Aaron Fox rookie jersey. I just think in the long run, something like this might be underpriced where some of his valuable cards might be uh, overheated or overpriced at this point. There's nothing. Go ahead and sit down. Well, there was a bunch of weed, meth, and paraphernalia in there, man. Where? In a backpack in the back. I don't have a backpack in there. You're the one in the car, man. I have, like, baseball cards back there. Okay. Football card market, all you need to know is Tom Brady and Mahomes prices have come down in the last year. Here's a Mahomes that is down 36% over the last year in a year in which Mahomes won the Super Bowl. This card is actually down 34% this month on nine sales. So with all the younger QBs, you guys have already baked in the Super Bowls already. Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Trevor Lawrence, any of those guys could win a Super Bowl this coming year. And their card values maybe wouldn't even move that much because you guys have already baked in the price of them not only winning a Super Bowl, but multiple Super Bowls. So until Mahomes prices and Tom Brady prices catch a bid and stop going down, I would stay away from football, except maybe cheap flyer QBs, maybe like... I think that Will Greer right now is about four times better of an investment than Kyler Murray. With baseball, you've seen a similar trend of football, but maybe a bottoming of sorts with baseball cards. This Mike Trout card, for example, is flat for the last month on 39 sales, down 9% over three months on 124 sales, but zoom out six months, and this card is back to flat on 251 sales, and now zoom out one year, and this card is down 41%. So somewhere in the last six months, at least on this particular Mike Trout card, it has caught a bid. If you look at the same graphs for a PSA 9 of this card, you see a similar trend. This card is flat over the last six months after being down huge over the last two years. Where I'd be careful with baseball is overpaying for younger players. Anthony Volpe, 22-year-old kid playing in New York City. He's going to struggle for a while before things come together for him. Similar struggles a little bit for Bobby Witt Jr. Hitting 232 this year. He's a 22-year-old kid. He probably should be playing in double or triple A right now. Both Volpe and Witt will probably be good or very good players by the time they are 25 or 26 years old. But at 22 years old, facing the type of pitching that's in the major leagues today, it's very very tough. Now, nobody in the sports card world is going to tell you this because they probably haven't been to hundreds of minor league baseball games like I have. And I've seen how difficult the sport of baseball is. There's a reason why you don't see 19 year old kids play in the NFL because that is a very grown man physical game. Baseball's deceptive because it isn't physical like football. You'd think some 19-year-old kid could come up and dominate in baseball, but it's just not that type of sport. The skill level to be good at hitting, at pitching, and even especially defense is absolutely unbelievable. And you actually hone those skills over many years. And with Volpe and Witt being only 22 years old, those guys are learning on the job at the major league level, that is very, very difficult. Again, those guys should be playing probably in double or triple A right now. They've, they've been rushed or brought up for whatever reason, and they are going to struggle probably for the next couple of years as, as hitting in major league baseball has become increasingly difficult as the pitching continues to improve year after year. Bo Bichette. Okay, back to the bright side of things. Let's take a look at a couple prices of sports cards that I think ended very, very strongly. 1998 Flair Showcase, one of one card of Jerry Rice, PSA 7, $18,000 on this one. This is a 1998 card. Flair! Jerry Rice had been in the league for about 12 years. So imagine if you zoom out about 25 years and you could have like a 12th year Patrick Mahomes one of one card sell for $18,000. I think that, I think this is just a good thing for base cards 
to have kind of these rare one of one, either like a super fractor, in this case, the legacy collection of Flare Showcase, sell for this amount of money. And earlier in the show, we looked at the PMG Greens, which there are only 10 copies of those. I just think, you know, it's very, very strong that these parallels, that these one of ones of base cards uh, sell for such a strong price all these years later. Speaking of strong price, over here on PWCC, this Rock One of One PSA 7 sold for $126,000. This is the highest priced wrestling card of all time. No wrestling card has ever sold for this amount of money. So very, very, very strong action on. You can see The Rock and also Stone Cold Steve Austin is in this particular picture. So an iconic photo of two iconic wrestlers and just a very, very strong price. So we will be back soon here on Sports Card Radio to talk more about sports card prices and all the shady happenings in this sports card industry. Be careful out there and we will see you later. That's not content. That's drama. 